So, have you ever wondered what it's like to walk up a stage and give a huge speech in front of thousands of people? Sounds completely nerve-wracking, right? Well, that's exactly how Dhoni must be feeling when he's playing the Cricket World Cup. And thousands of fans are relying on him to win. And sometimes, while making these videos, I also feel the same. Even though I have made 33 videos, some only a handful of them, 3 or 4, have managed to get more than 1000 views. But still, every time I sit in front of the camera, I feel the same way. Like I'm doing public speaking. Well, that is the problem. Whenever we are trying to perform, whether that's on stage or on camera or in a stadium, we get huge intense emotions that make our performance poor. Which means even if you are intelligent, when it's time to perform, your huge emotions turn you dumb. So the key thing for intelligence is actually mastering emotional intelligence. But our education system completely ignored emotional intelligence. Which is why, if you are on a date, let's say you are a casual, cool and chill person. But when you are on a date with a girl, you get huge nerve-wracking emotions and you are no longer casual, cool or chill. Instead, you are dumb, awkward and clumsy. So your friends all wonder, why are you still single? Because when they meet you, they meet you without these emotions. <laughs> so, how to be calm like MS Dhoni? So that our performance and our intelligence actually shines through. That's what we are going to learn in this video. And before we master emotions, we need to understand emotions. When do they come? Why do they come? And what purpose do they actually serve? Well, the simple answer is, emotions control our behavior to protect us from death. I know it's hard to believe, but all our emotions are basically trying to protect us from death. It's easier to see in some examples and harder to see in others. Let's start with the easy ones. Let's say you are skydiving. Now, even though you're wearing all the parachute and all the safety and you're jumping with the instructor and there's 99.99% chance that nothing is going to happen to you. When you're about to take the action of jumping out of the aeroplane, huge amount of fear comes and prevents you from jumping. I mean, I remember when I skydived, after I jumped, I was actually very happy. But before I jumped, I was scared to death. So this huge intense fear tries to stop you from jumping in order to protect you from death. So fear protects you from death and pain protects you from death. For example, if you're a baby and if you go and touch fire, you get a huge amount of pain and that pain prevents you from taking that action again. So pain protects you from death. These things are easier to see and every kid knows this. But the harder thing to see is shame protects you from death. So let's say this is your value. So this is the number line where this is zero value, this is positive and this is negative. So whenever you do something great, people praise you, respect you, admire you and your value keeps on increasing. And as your value goes up and up, you start to get followers. But whenever you do something bad, then people shame you, disrespect you, insult you and your value keeps on going down. So what happens? People abandon you. Abandonment. So depending upon your value, you either gain people or you lose people. And as you gain people, your chances of survival increases. As you lose people, your chances of survival decreases. So losing value inches you closer towards death and gaining value inches you closer towards life. So basically we are like a pack of wolves where only when you are in the pack, you are safe. But when you are outside it, you will die. This is the reason why whenever you leave your dog at home, it goes into extreme separation anxiety because that dog believes you are part of his pack. So humans are the same way. This is the reason why whenever you are going to make an Instagram post, you feel a panic inside you. Because you are like, will people like this? Or will people hate this? You get a lot of anxiety. And this is why I get a lot of anxiety when I am making YouTube videos. Because whether will I get likes, subscribes and comments? Or will I get negative comments and unsubscribes? This is the reason why you are choking on stage. And this is the reason why it's harder to be Dhoni during the World Cup Finals. I mean, the death is real. I mean, I remember in one of those World Cups when India lost, people actually went and broke Dhoni's house. So I'm not kidding when I talk about death. So even in something so small and so silly, like wearing your favorite dress, there's an incredible amount of shame that comes that stops you from taking the action of wearing your favorite dress. Because you're afraid whether people will laugh at you, ridicule you or bully you at school. So everything that you do in life, every behavior of yours is actually controlled by the perception of others. How they value you, perceive you matters for your survival or death. I mean, I have experienced this for one of my own videos. So whenever there's a girl I like walking on road, 
I approach her and try to start a conversation with her. Saying, hi, you look really cute. Thought I'll just come say hi. So the action of talking to the girl is so hard due to intense emotions of panic and fear. Why? Because our society shames you for it. So you can't wear the favorite dress you like or talk to the favorite girl you like. You will find it difficult to do or be just yourself. I mean, for this video of mine, I actually got insulting comments even from boys. True story. So what every emotion does is it controls our behavior to protect us from death. So if you take this entire sheet as all the behaviors that you can have, so each point is a behavior, then our emotions, fear, shame and pain, put us in this box where each edge is an emotion. So fear, shame, pain and they allow us to take actions only inside this box. So any action like jumping off a plane during skydive when you try to take that action coming out of this box you get a huge emotion of fear stopping you from taking it another example is say you want to go to the gym <coughs> then that action of going to the gym is outside the box and whenever you try to take that action a huge emotion of pain comes stopping you from taking that action another example is if you are going up on stage talking before a mic huge emotions come and make you choke on the mic so we need to fight our own emotions in order to do the things that we need to do. So does this mean our emotions are all the time wrong, stopping us from taking actions that are for our own good? Absolutely not. Say you're jumping off a plane without a parachute. Then that action needs to be stopped with intense fear. Otherwise, it would be very easy for people to commit suicide. Similarly, if somebody is going and touching fire, that needs to be stopped with pain. So in the case of gym and skydiving, our emotions are wrong. But in the case of fire and without parachute, our emotions are right. So sometimes our emotions are right, sometimes they are wrong. And when they are wrong, we need to fight our own emotions in order to do the things that we need to do. So in my personal life with YouTube, all my videos are bombing and I get lots and lots of negative comments. So I experience all three emotions, fear, shame and pain. But I still keep fighting through them and keep making videos. Similarly, in my dating life, everybody shames me for when I pursue a girl. My parents, friends, everybody. I remember in dating apps, there was one girl where when I sent her my YouTube channel, which had this video, she unmatched me in just five minutes. <laughs> so again, I feel all three emotions, fear, shame and pain, but I still keep marching on so that I get out of the box and take the actions that I want. So since I'm experiencing all three emotions together, a better picture would be drawing it like a circle. So this is the circle of emotions where inside the circle, you are safe and comfortable. But anytime you take actions outside the circle, there is pain, fear, shame and complete discomfort. So ideally, if our emotions are actually accurate, then every behavior inside the box would mean life and every behavior outside the box would mean death. This is the ideal scenario. But instead, the actual life that we live is a circle of emotions and then a circle of life. So every behavior inside this circle is life, outside it is death and every behavior inside this inner circle of emotions is safety and comfort and everything in this region is pain and discomfort. So even though this entire circle is life, we never get to live in the entire circle. Instead, we only get to live in this inner circle just like a jail. So we get trapped by our own emotions in this small tiny box that we are not able to express our opinions and say what we want because of all the shame and pain and fear that people might give to us. So stepping out of this jail and taking an action even though it's shameful, fearful and painful, is how you get freedom. But if you decide to stay inside the circle in order to feel safe and comfortable, then you're forever a slave. So according to me, staying inside the circle is slavery and stepping outside is freedom. But people often confuse and look at it the other way around. I'll give you an example. So take this action of sitting at home, lazily eating chips, watching TV, all the time just lying down. This is fun and pleasurable, of course. But an action like going to the gym, where you wake up in the morning, your head feels groggy, you hit the gym, it's all pains when you're pushing, that's going to be very, very painful, which is why it's outside the box. And one might think, this guy is living a free life where he gets to do whatever he wants to do. And this guy is living in slavery because he needs to be all disciplined and wake up every day morning at 6 and do the same routine every single day. So being inside the box can be considered as freedom and being outside the box can be considered as slavery. 
but according to me stepping out of the box and going to the gym is freedom but listening to your emotions and staying inside at home is slavery this is a very confusing concept and you might even need a minute to think about it what is actually slavery and what is actually freedom is the guy who gets to do whatever he wants whenever he wants to do it listening all the time to his emotions and not at all disciplined you see the guy who is actually free or is the guy who is very disciplined and goes to the gym even though he doesn't like it suffers in pain his head hurts is that guy free well i used to be the guy who thought this is freedom and this is slavery but when i understood how the circle of emotions keep us trapped inside this like a slave i understood the actual picture of freedom and slavery it's very crucial that you understand this and start fighting your own emotions to do the right thing i am fighting my own emotions and doing this video i mean i could be just lying down on the couch and just daydreaming about this video right instead of actually sitting down and making it but does this mean all the time we need to keep on fighting our emotions never listening to them of course not i'll give you an analogy in kabali movie after rajinikanth gets released from jail he goes and releases a bird from its cage so basically he gets released from jail freedom and the bird gets released from cage freedom now if you look at the bird this was the cage that the bird was in inside it was slavery and when it came out it got freedom but let's say the bird keeps on flying 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 and breaks out of the earth's atmosphere then basically this is earth itself and it when it breaks out of the atmosphere of earth it goes for death similarly in our case when you break out of this circle of emotion you get freedom but when you break this circle of life you get death meaning fighting your emotions and going for a sky dive is freedom but fighting your emotions and jumping off the terrace of your building and committing suicide is wrong like there you should listen to your overwhelming emotions of fear and panic and just come off the ledge right so this side of the circle you need to listen to your emotions and this side of the circle you need to go against your emotions so you need to do both you need to understand when it's good for you to listen to your emotions and when it's bad for you to listen to your emotions and this fighting your emotion this thing goes by different different names according to the situation for example for gym this is called as discipline or will power and when it comes to skydiving the same act of rebellion against your emotions is called as courage so will power discipline courage it's, they're all just a big fight against your own emotions against your own intuitions and the famous dialogue in kabali solunga jama kabali or kabali da is basically an argument for you to be courageous let me explain so in kabali movie when rajini was in jail the jail is outside his box of circle of emotions because a jail is a very painful place to be in he loses his daughter wife family everything so when he finally gets released from jail he gets back to a safe and comfortable life that we all live so after being in jail for 15 years and seeing all that pain of being in jail when he finally comes back to regular life the villains will think that rajini will no longer fight because if he fights then that fighting the villains action is something outside the box where it will take him straight back to jail so if rajini thinks of fighting them then huge emotions of pain and his memories of jail will ask him to go back inside the box right it will make him a slave inside the box so when the villains confront rajini they all think that rajini would be a slave solunga yajama kabali but rajini smashes the villains and fights again stepping out of the box and proving to everyone that he is a free kabali so here also the same freedom slavery confusion you will get so if this is the jail then sitting inside jail is slavery and getting out of the jail is freedom jail is slavery outside is freedom but according to kabali staying outside is slavery but going back to jail is freedom so the freedom slavery definition switches even in this place living the safe and comfortable life is actually not freedom it is slavery fighting for your rights and what you believe in fighting for justice and going back to jail is actually freedom and and in almost every movie stepping out of this box of circle of emotions and going to this painful place is heroic and courageous so a more simpler diagram is if this is pain pain shame fear basically i'm taking one small tangent of the circle so if you focus on that tangent then taking a step and crossing through this threshold and tolerating pain is heroic but being a slave of pain and staying in this side of the pain is cowardly so how do you deal with pain do you tolerate it or do you avoid it are you solunga yajama kabali or are you kabali that's what all of life is about so how you answer this question 
has lots and lots of repercussions in our day-to-day, -day, everyday life. Let me give you examples. I mean, this is all just theory. Let me go to practice. So, the first thing that you get when you step out of the box is creativity. And this out-of-the-box movement is basically out-of-the-box thinking. I'm not joking, I'm serious. So, in the case of creativity, this box represents all the rules. And stepping out of the box is basically breaking the rules. So, in whatever field you are in, all the ancestors and great, great legends, they would have this way of pattern of behavior. They will, they will have all these rules, like this is how you should behave, this is how you should do things. They have all these rules. And whenever you are following those rules, you are safe. Society accepts you. But whenever you break the rules and do something the society has never heard of, that takes courage and that produces creativity. So, the rule followers play it safe and the rule breakers play a dangerous game that requires courage. The perfect analogy for this is herd of cows. So, let's say all the cows are walking in one direction. So, this is all the cows. They are all going in one direction. Then you staying within the herd gives you safety and protection. And it's also the logical thing to do. Your emotions will also keep you in the herd because going out is dangerous. But if you step out of the herd and go someplace else, then you will be alone and you could be eaten by a tiger. Of course, pain is there and of course, it's dangerous. But by following the crowd, you don't discover anything new. You just discover the same thing that everybody did before. You're just a rule follower and a herd follower. But by taking the risk, being alone and facing the pain, you have a chance to be creative and find something new. So, what else? Like in everyday practical life, stepping out of the box gives you creativity. But what else does it give? Well, it gives you truth. Let me give you an example. Let's say you watch a time-lapse video. That the sun is moving across the sky, but the earth is staying still. So, earth is not moving and sun is moving. That's what you see. But the truth is, the sun stays where it is and the earth is moving. So, if this is the sun and if this is the earth, then when earth moves this way, and you on earth moves along with the earth in that way, for you the sun alone will seem like moving in the opposite direction. But this truth goes against all of your intuitions, emotions and mood and feelings. <laughs> I mean 10,000 years ago, when there was no science and satellites to see what was happening, and if I told you that the moving sun is staying still and the still earth is actually moving, you'll slap me because it goes against every emotion. So if this is your circle of emotions, then the truth is always outside. All scientific truth are always outside. Which is why people still believe that the earth is flat and not round. I mean, I can empathize with them. The earth does look flat and only the sun looks round. Right? And what's more, the small sun is actually huge and this huge earth is actually small. In fact, the sun is 100 times bigger than us. So, if you look at the video again, then the small sun is big, the big earth is small, the flat earth is round and in fact, the sun is not at all moving, it's staying still. And that's the problem with scientific truth. All our parents, grandparents, ancestors, they are all like a herd. They believe that the earth is flat. And going for science is actually getting out of that herd, being alone to find and discover the truth. Which is a very courageous thing to do. It's not an easy thing. Believing in science that goes against all of your belief systems, emotions and intuitions. So, practically, Stepping out of the box not only gives you creativity, but also gives you truth. And what else does it help you to do? It helps you break old habits. So, all the old habits that you live by, all the old rules like this is where my car keys go, this is where my tumbler goes, all of those habits, rules, are actually a box. And anything new, anything different, any change requires you to get out of the box and requires you to tolerate pain. And since change is the only thing that's constant, and since learning is always going to be there, if you are going to avoid pain and keep staying in your own old habits, where everything is known, but outside it is unknown, then you are never going to improve in life. This especially gets very, very challenging as you grow older and older in life. Because you pick up a lot of habits and it's hard for you to break them and embrace change. So, breaking habits and embracing change, what else? Well, stepping out of the box gives us happiness. And it gives happiness in two ways. One is growth and the other is intimacy. Let me talk about growth first. So, everywhere online, when you take any YouTube channel, what you will find is that every YouTube channel has a niche. And niche is basically one particular topic that a channel takes. And all the videos are all about that same topic. Like they don't go to any other topic. So, by taking a niche, 
and by repeatedly making videos in the same topic again and again and again they get better and better and better so basically they become master of one so that niche is like a box and they never go out of the box similarly in colleges there are degrees there are fields so for example i took the field computer science and i was only asked to study computer science go deeper and deeper and deeper into it and never go for anything else so again computer science is the box never go out of it and become a master of one but what i realized is this niche or field is a box and as you keep practicing the same field again and again and again you kept getting better and better and better and so your ego gets bigger and bigger and bigger but the downside is now you are afraid to go anywhere outside the box because only inside the box you could sound smart and act like a king but outside the box you are a fool again and you almost always look stupid so the same pattern inside there is ego inside there is safety but outside there was pain and humility and outside there was growth so inside there is safety everything is known there is order but outside it is unknown there is danger and it's pure chaos this happened in my own life when i was in computer science and i was studying artificial intelligence i used to think i was really really smart and like felt like a king of the world but what i realized is i was slowly turning into a kenatthu tavala basically tavala means frog in tamil and kenar is a well so there is the story of a well so this is the ground and this tavala was always living inside the well and since it never went out and saw the outside world it used to think i am the greatest i am the biggest i am the best frog in the world but one day when it went out of the well and saw the whole world that's when it became humble <laughs> which is what i started doing in my youtube channel one day i made a video on hair fall like i'm a doctor one day i was in beach playing with water as if i'm a blogger one day i made a dating video in tamil and the next day i was making physics videos in english so basically i was like this shake it off song where taylor swift a great singer is actually in this box of singing so as she has practiced singing for so many years she's excellent in singing but in the song whenever she tries ballet dancing hip hop dancing robot dancing or even finger dancing instead of looking smart and intelligent she started looking dumb and stupid which is what happens when you get out of the box all you get is pain and humility and which is why nobody gets out of the box and do exploration but what people don't understand is exploration is happiness you see people touring the whole world going to different different countries continents eating new food and they call it happiness right and you immediately understand it but what people don't understand is even in our jobs even mentally when you explore to different different fields you get the same fun that people get when they travel the world but people don't travel because there's a huge amount of shame and pain that is stopping you from doing the exploration so this is one way of happiness what is the other way well the other way is intimacy let me explain so if you remember our shame number line let me draw it again so if this is the number line and if this is zero then whenever it comes to truth in this region positive region it's easy to be honest but whenever it comes to this negative region all of our shameful things it's very very difficult to be honest so if you take honesty then a huge amount of shame stops us all from being honest so if you get first rank in your school you will call everyone up and tell them that you are first rank but if you are last rank in school even if people ask you what's your rank you will prefer not to tell them so even when it comes to honesty these are the things that are that we are honest about but these are the things that we are dishonest about so here honesty is easy because these are all proud things about us but here honesty is really really hard and this is where honesty counts you can even see this on instagram like people post their good side like there'll be a guy who's all smiling laughing and very happy on his instagram but the next day he'll commit suicide why because he never posted his bad side because of shame and even people with serious illnesses for example let's say you have pies then they never have the courage to go to the hospital and reveal it to the doctor because they're so ashamed of the pies and i've heard many cases where they let the pies grow worse and worse and worse and only when they're bleeding blood like liters and liters of blood that they actually go and see a doctor and sometimes by by that time it's basically too late to treat them so in fear of shame and fear of death they end up not getting treatment and they actually end up dying so shame is the biggest enemy to honesty people lie cheat act they do everything they can in order to be dishonest because they don't want to be ashamed but once you cross shame and get to honesty you'll feel the happiness of freedom 
which is what i felt when i made the video on pies or a video on why i suck on youtube even though they were all shameful things about me that i was sharing publicly online <laughs> i actually felt free after all those videos i felt the happiness of freedom but it's not just the happiness of freedom honesty gives intimacy if you go on dating apps seven out of 10 girls would write in their profile saying be yourself be honest be authentic be genuine they all say that's the kind of guy they would like to be committed to but hardly anyone is honest because of shame so in fear of losing your value and losing people you are actually losing the girl that you are looking to impress so if you are sitting on a date then instead of being honest and being yourself people watch all these dating videos online and, and they spend hours and hours optimizing the best thing to say to a girl in order to impress her so they end up acting lying they act all manly and confident but the counterintuitive thing is instead of behaving the way you have to behave instead of focusing on looking cool if you focus on being your awkward clumsy and innocent self if you focus on being yourself and being real that's when you form a real connection with the girl and you actually end up getting the girl there's even a book called attract women through honesty by mark manson and also this 3 hours 4 hours podcast by james sexton who is a divorce lawyer and has seen thousands and thousands of marriages break and he understood that the more and more honest you are the more and more you intimate you can get and the more and more dishonest you are the more and more the connection breaks so if you watch the leo movie then it's a perfect example of how not to date because leo acts all cool and lies to his wife it's the exact opposite of what you must be doing in order to be intimate with your partner but being honest is very 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 hard it's almost as hard as dhoni playing the cricket world cup with thousands and thousands of fans waiting on him to perform it's very nerve wracking to be honest and vulnerable before others because when you're honest you're at the lower end of the value system and you are out of the box where there is pain even on my youtube channel the hardest video that i made was a video on homosexuality where i share with people how i was sexually molested as a child in third standard where i was forced to suck another guy's dick yeah that happened so in summary stepping out of the box gives you creativity lets you reach scientific truths lets you change old habits and embrace change destroy your ego and be humble and have a learning mindset lets you explore and be happy lets you be honest and get intimate with people so whenever someone asks you hey how are you bro and you're like yeah 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 i'm fine 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 but inside you're all sad and depressed well that way you're never going to form a real genuine connection with that person who is asking you how are you bro but that doesn't mean whenever you're honest you're always going to build intimate deep close genuine real connections i mean there is pain in being honest people use your honesty and weaponize against you i mean i have had negative comments who ruthlessly punish me using details that i shared on the video like this guy knows i'm divorced because i shared to him that i am divorced so when you are honest there is a very good chance that people use that honesty facts and truth to turn it into a weapon and hurt you when they want to that is why honesty is outside the box it is painful sometimes but sometimes you form real genuine connections and you get very very close to someone so these are all the benefits of getting out of the box but how do you get out of the box you just keep fighting with your own emotions and you just use will power well brute force and pure will power is definitely a way but you can be smart about it like hard work and smart work the smart way of fighting your emotions is through breathing i'm not kidding so if we go back to our very first lesson you would remember that emotions are there to protect you from death you see any action that we take if it feels like it is dangerous to our life then huge amount of emotions try to come and stop that action and how do these emotions achieve it well they achieve it by challenging the breath so any time you are stepping out of the box where this is death huge emotions come and they make it very very difficult for you to breathe so your emotions make you feel like that point is death so seeing that your breathing is so difficult you run back inside the box i'll tell you a story of how i realized this one day i went to the beach so this is the beach these are the waves and there were so many people very crowded on this part of the beach so what i did is i took a walk i went very far it was night time night like 9 o'clock and i went so far that there was no one there and it was pitch dark and at that place i sat down for a session of meditation so i'm sitting there and closing my eyes and focusing on my breath 
10 minutes into my session, I feel some noises. I look back, there's a huge pack of dogs. Just wild, stray dogs. Turns out I was in their territory and they were there to challenge me for a fight. <laughs> now remember, even if I shout, no one's going to hear. I'm alone here and they are a pack of dogs. And since I'm sitting down, they're all at my eye level. So this is their mouth and this is me. So I was basically in this position. Or maybe even here. I'm not really sure. <laughs> so huge amount of panic came over me. And one of the dogs also started shouting, like getting ready for a fight. My heartbeat was through the roof and I just shouted like a mad person and scared them away. But the point is, even 10-15 minutes later, when the dogs were all scattered and they never came back to me, my heart rate was still very high and my body was still in panic mode. But when I was struggling to meditate even in that mental state, what I discovered was that huge fear was basically choking my diaphragm. So our diaphragm actually expands and that's how we breathe. And I felt a constriction, like a choking in that diaphragm. My diaphragm was not able to expand fully and I was not able to take a deep breath properly. So my own emotions were making it very, very hard for me to breathe. So it made the situation feel like death and it was making me run towards safety. And that day it all clicked for me. Because even when I go for cold approaches and let's say I go talk to a girl and somebody, some girl shames me real bad. I felt the same constriction in my diaphragm when people insult me very badly. So shame, fear, every emotion when it's very, very intense, they're going to challenge your breath and make you feel like death. And they're going to make you run towards the box. So emotions and breathing are like in a tug of war. When emotions are real high, very intense, your breath gets challenged and becomes very poor. So the only way to calm down your emotions is by forcing yourself to take deep breaths and pushing the emotions down. This happens every day in life. When someone's really, really angry, what do we say? Calm down, bro. Take deep breaths. Take a walk. Take deep breaths. And if, say, someone is really, really scared, same logic. Calm down, bro. Take a deep breath. Take a walk. Take a deep breath. So every emotion that you have, like anger, fear, shame, whatever you might be feeling, even pain, you must breathe, breathe, breathe and push through your breath to fight against the emotion. Because if you are able to breathe properly in this position, if you are able to prove to yourself that life is possible in this position, and if you keep doing that repeatedly through practice, like you keep on stepping out of the box and you keep on taking a breath, you keep on tolerating the huge incredible emotions, but you keep on trying again and again. For example, I had lots and lots of camera anxiety, but I kept on switching on the camera and kept on struggling in my anxiety and I kept on making videos. So through repetition and practice, if this is your box and if you repeatedly keep stepping out of the box again and again and again, and each time if you're proving to yourself that life is possible by taking breaths, then slowly your mind gets strained and your box expands. Now this point or this behavior is also part of your box. So now when I switch on a camera and start talking, I don't feel that much fear automatically. Similarly, in cold approaches, after making 200 and 215 approaches, now when I go talk to a girl, I actually don't feel any fear. Yeah, sometimes it happens. But there are times where when I go and open on her, even the girl is surprised like, how come this guy is so confident? But the two reasons why it was all possible is conscious breathing and practice. So overnight, you're not going to become MS Tony. Of course not. <laughs> But you need to use willpower. Take yourself out of the box knowing that it is going to be uncomfortable there. And when your emotions are rising up, you must consciously take deep, deep breaths and you must keep practicing this again and again and again. Now, breathing might sound like a really simple advice and it might even sound like a joke to you. But Jokovic, <laughs> I mean, joke, Jokovic, Jokovic, when he was interviewed in Olympics and they asked him, what is the one single advice that he would give to Olympic athletes competing at the Olympic finals, Djokovic's advice was to perform conscious breathing. But the point is, it's really, really difficult to become conscious of your breathing. And the only way to become conscious of your breathing and become mindful of yourself is through meditation. And I made a meditation guide to explain how that works. So, catch that video and start meditating. I'll see you in the next video.